Welcome back. The purpose of this video is to formalize the procedure that we use to reduce a matrix to row echelon form or reduce row echelon form. Generally, solving a linear system by Gaussian elimination and back substitution means following a specific algorithm until the augmented matrix reaches row echelon form. This allows you to solve for the last variable, which you can substitute to solve for the other variables. Solving a linear system using Gauss-Jordan elimination means using the algorithm to reduce the augmented matrix to reduce row echelon form from where you can read the solution directly. We won't require that you follow the Gauss-Jordan algorithm exactly in this course, but if you get stuck in the row reduction process, it's a good idea to take a look and see if you can figure out where you went wrong. Let's look carefully at the Gauss-Jordan algorithm. Using the three elementary row operations, we can use the following procedure to reach row echelon form or reduce row echelon form. The algorithm consists of six steps. In the first step, we need to find the leftmost non-zero column. This means we're looking for a column that contains at least one number, which is not equal to zero. If the entry at the top of this column is zero, then use a row swap to place a non-zero entry in this position. Moving on to step two, we want to now scale the first row so that the leftmost non-zero entry is a one, called a leading one. In step three, we want to create zeros in all positions beneath the leading one by adding or subtracting suitable multiples of the row containing the leading one. In step four, if the matrix is in row echelon form, then we should go to step five. If it's not yet in row echelon form, then what we'll do is cover or ignore the first row and repeat steps one, two, and three within the remaining matrix. Eventually, we'll get to row echelon form following these four steps. Once we're in row echelon form, we could stop there and solve the linear system using back substitution. On the other hand, we can continue to reduce row echelon form using step five. At this step, we want to find the rightmost leading one. We'll use this rightmost leading one to create zeros above it by adding or subtracting suitable multiples of the row containing this leading one. Moving on to step six, if the matrix is now in reduced row echelon form, we're finished. If it's not in reduced row echelon form, then we should cover or ignore the row that was just used and repeat step five on the remaining matrix. Let's now look at a picture to see exactly how we can carry out the Gauss-Jordan algorithm. This is how the Gauss-Jordan algorithm will look as you proceed through the steps using elementary row operations. Here we'll use star to denote any real number, and the tilde will mean that we've done one or more elementary row operations. So how we're going to start the algorithm is we look at this matrix, which is full of stars, and we want to look and we'd like to position a one in this top left position. As long as the first column isn't a column of zeros, we can do that either by scaling a row or adding scalar multiples of one row to another row or by doing a row swap. When we do that and we have a one in the top left position, we can use this one to clear below by adding scalar multiples of the first row to the other rows. When that's completed, notice that the first column reads 1, 0, 0, 0. We're simplifying the matrix. Now that we've accomplished that, we're going to cross off the first row, leaving us with a smaller matrix, and we, receipt, we repeat the procedure. We start by looking in the top left of the new matrix. We, as long as that's, that column is not a zero column, we can make it a one. And then we can use that one to clear below by adding scalar multiples of this new first row to the other two rows. Something funny happens in this case when we do it. It won't always happen, but I wanted to show you that this could happen. So this new row becomes one zero zero, but notice that we also got some zeros here. That means that when we cross off this matrix, this, this row, and we're left with D, 
this new submatrix, the first column is a column of zeros and the second column is a column of zeros. That means when we continue with our procedure in the algorithm, it's this position here that we want to make a one. Once we do that, we're able to clear below that one by adding a scalar multiple of this new first row to the second row. That leaves us with the following matrix where we have now a one and a zero in this column. Our final submatrix is just this small one here. And we're gonna do the same procedure again. In particular, as long as this number here is not a zero, I need to make it a one. Which again, we can do this time just by scaling. Okay, so let's look at a few things. The first the thing that I wanna highlight is we do have this sort of staircase pattern where we have ones on the tops of the stairs and zeros below the stairs. Notice also that at this stage, we're in, we're in row echelon form. The leading entry of the first row is to the left of the leading entry of the second row, which is to the left of the leading entry of the third row, which is to the left of the leading entry of the fourth row. Below each of the leading entries, we have zeros. And any rows of zeros, in this case, which we don't have any, are at the bottom of the matrix. So what this means is at this stage, the matrix is in REF. If you're just going for REF, this is where you can stop. But if you want to continue to reduced row echelon form, we need to continue. What we're going to do is we will take this leading one here and we'll use it to clear above. Again, we can clear above by adding scalar multiples of this fourth row to the other rows. When we do that, we now have this new column. We move on to the next leading one moving this time from the right to the left. We'll use this leading one to clear above it, again, by adding scalar multiples of this row to the other rows. Now notice that we have, again, zeros above the leading one, and from before, we have zeros below the leading one. We move over to the next column that contains the leading one, which is here, and I'll use this leading one to clear above it, by adding a scalar multiple of this row to the other row. Again, once I do this, I've cleared above the row, it still remains cleared from before. So now when I look at each of the columns that contain the leading one, notice that I have zeros below and above the leading one. Let's quickly verify that all four conditions of reduced row echelon form are met. First, we see that there's no rows of zeros, so condition one is met. The second condition says that any leading entries must be to the left of leading entries below, which we see is true. Each leading entry is a one, meaning condition three is true. And finally, when we look above and below any of the leading entries, we have zeros. This matrix is in RREF. In the next videos, we'll see how to use elementary row operations on actual matrices and to go through a procedure close to this one in order to take an augmented matrix and reduce it to row echelon form or reduce echelon form.